Hi there, Vince here from my mate Vince, and it is welding time again. So uh, you like this? Not a lot, but you like it. Does anybody know where that's from who's not from the UK? I doubt it. Get this. So you can see here I have some repair panels and a whole rear wing here. Now if I said to you, what was more expensive? That or that one there? Everybody in their right mind would say the rear wing, but you'd be wrong. So basically we have the wheel arch here that was quite a bit over 200 pounds. We have this repair panel down here, including that, that was over 100 pounds. That whole wing, yes, the whole wing was, get this, including that, I think it was including that, no, maybe not including that, but it was 48 pounds. I think that might be including that. 48 pounds, that there was half the price of that. So you might be wondering why on earth didn't I get one for the other side? Because why would I spend over 300 pounds on them two bits when I can get the whole wing for 50 pounds? Well, it's because for some reason, that side of the car, 50 pound, other side of the car, I think it was 800 pound or thereabouts, give or take, <laughs> give or take 100 pounds, because it's a Rolls Royce, so we don't really care about the, the, the zeros on the end. But uh, yeah, what a bargain. I did have to pay £60 to get these three things delivered so it wasn't cheap. But as you can see, this part here is going to be to repair the very bottom section of the car. So uh, that section at the back here, the one that was filled with tin foil, all down here. Obviously it's not going to repair the inner, it's just the outer. I've got to make up something for the inner. And uh, the wheel arch is going to be going all the way around here. Now, good thing about the replacement panel for the wheel arch is it does actually go all the way round. So you can see from here, it goes all the way down to there. While on the back panel, it only goes about three quarters of the way through, but that's fine because on the other side, the wheel arch is okay apart from the very bottom bit. So I'm not going to need 90% of this wing. All I need is this bit down here. So I need to cut across here and then go down here, down here and straight across there. So I'm only actually using that bit there. It was just so much cheaper to do that rather than get the repair panels. So uh, yeah, I'm pleased. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to get the wheel arch on. So I am going to be, I should say this now in case you're new to my channel, I'm not an expert at this. I've never replaced a wheel arch in my life. So just take this as a kind of DIY dad trying to do something themselves. And it just so happens that it's a Rolls Royce. So obviously you're not gonna see the correct techniques in this video. But what I'm thinking about doing is cutting all the way along here, all the way along, all the way along, all the way along to here. You can see it's already had a repair panel down here. And then what I would like to do is I would like to drill holes everywhere all along here, drill, 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 every like centimetre, all the way around. And then I would like to joggle, if that is the right name, the top of this. So again, I'm gonna cut this one, but about a centimetre or a centimetre and a half longer than where I'm cutting the actual bodywork. And then I'm gonna try to joggle this in, which means kind of pushing it in a little bit. So it will fit under the bodywork of the car. So the idea is that the bodywork from the car will come down and it will go over my repair section. My repair section will go underneath it and then I can uh, weld through the holes. So I'm welding through from here, this metal, which will hopefully be good up here, onto the new wheel arch. That's what I'm hoping. And uh, yeah, the inner wheel arch itself, I think when I clean it up, will actually be okay. We've got a bit of a hole here. Maybe I can do a little patch up there, but the rest of it does actually look pretty solid. It just looks like a bit of surface rust. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna start by cutting this one old one out here. Now, I probably will have to use the angle grinder. The problem is I don't know how accurate I'm gonna get it. I was tempted to try and use the Dremel tool, but I'm not sure if I'm just gonna wear through the blade straight away, but I might give it a go because with the Dremel tool, because the blade's only this big, I'll be able to get a nice clean cut all the way along. And uh, I know it's all gonna have to be filled afterwards, but maybe it will mean less work if I can do it neater to begin with. Not sure. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna have to cut away all this and grind away all of the old outer wheel arch uh, to get back to the clean inner wheel arch. Now, I think, as far as the structure is concerned, I think, 
not sure. I think it's the inner wheel arch which is all structural, the outer wheel arch is more cosmetic, but this here would still be an MOT failure because it could be damaging to somebody. You know what I mean? This could this could uh, get somebody and hurt somebody. So uh, yeah, it still has to, if I was to fill all that up, it would actually pass the MOT. Hence the reason why it has been filled up for the past probably few years. Anyway, let's uh, see if we can get it looking a little bit better than this. I say a little bit because I'm sure it's still gonna look awful at the end of it. Right, so I need to make a little bit of room for myself. So I'm gonna move it back. This is the first time I've actually gotten it to drive it since uh, I've put it into this uh, side bit here. So I'm quite looking forward to it, reversing it, even if it is only for a meter. Well, the good news is it still rolls, which is uh, good. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit more room to work now. So what I have to do is I have to get the wheel off, jack, well, jack it up, get the wheel off, undo the wheel, start again. Let's undo the wheel, jack it up, and then take the wheel off. And then that will give me access to grind away the old metal. Make an amazing Frisbee, but more like a weapon. Right, okay, so these ones are going to undo, I presume, the same way as the front wheel, which is the normal way. I've just noticed on the back here there's those little bolts going around the wheel as well. I didn't notice that on the front, hold on. Yeah, they're not on the front at all, so it's like a different different design. Yeah. Right, they're sufficiently loose now, so I'm going to jack it up. Put an axle stand underneath it, but I won't be going under it anyway. Right, so we've got the wood under it now, a bit of plywood. Right, that's lifted. I'm just gonna do it a little bit more. And I'm gonna get some axle stands to put under there as well. Well, I've changed my top as well because I don't want to get my yellow one dirty. That's strange here. On the wheel, there's a little Dunlop symbol. You know, the D with the, uh, with the arrow. See just there? So maybe Dunlop made the wheels then. Good. Out of all of them, this tyre is by far the best one. But even this one is old, because it says here, where's the date code? 1507, you see? So this is from 2007. It's obviously had very little use. Everything is just so big. What I'm gonna have to do though is I've got some uh, axle stands. The problem is because it's still taking the weight on the jack, you can't get the axle stands perfect because they are uh, this huge, you know, that there to there, do you know what I mean? There's massive, uh, massive gaps on them. I've lost a pin for that one there. So I think what I might 
get is a couple of those bottle jacks you know the ones that you can jack up because then you'll actually be able to get it exactly where you want instead of having to just kind of because even if I put the jack down onto that one there it's going to be different for the other ones because they're on different parts of the car so uh, yeah but I'm not going under it they're just there just in case the jack fails you know hopefully hopefully that will take it until uh, I can get myself well out of the area but I will have to get, I think, those little bottle jacks where you can just bring them up, you know, millimetre by millimetre. Anyway, look at the size of this thing here. So this isn't vented at the back. Actually looks pretty thin. But there's no ridge on it. So I don't know what the thickness of these discs should be. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's completely normal. You can see the stop there, big rubber stop here. Look how clean that bit is there because obviously it's not normally jacked up, is it? So you can see that this bit is normally hidden underneath there. Uh, underneath here i wonder should that be should that be cable tied down the bottom there should it be fixed at the bottom not too sure and we have loads of uh look at that it's definitely a lot rustier back here than it is at the front of the car because i suppose all the oil leaks is keeping the the rust out of it and only one brake caliper at the back here not like the front where there was two and the brake pads look Mm, doesn't look like there's much meat on them, but there's still meat there. Either side of this rusty bit, you see the rusty bit is the disc. Right, okay. Let's get this wheel arch off. So, I suppose ideally, what's it? Oh, this is all metal here, so I can't. Yeah, of course, this is the inner, uh, the outer inner wheel arch. So there's no kind of plastic cover here, like the front wings. So that's all going to be staying put. So it doesn't look like there's any brake lines that go around this area here. How about underneath here? I'm going to have to have a look underneath here, see what's what. And also underneath this section here. Let me just put the camera under here for the moment. Don't think there's anything there, but I'll have to use my eyes. Well, I'm going to see if this works. Don't think it will, but I just want to see, because if it does work, it means I can get a nice neat, uh, a nice neat cut all the way along. Well, I think fair play to the little Dremel tool. I think it did all right for itself. This was already a part used one. So I'm gonna put a brand new one in it now. I've got about, uh, I don't know how many I've got in the pack, four or five of them. And let's see, maybe one more might actually do it. I forgot to mention as well that I've got a bucket of water here in case uh, something does go wrong. And also the battery has been completely disconnected. Right, okay. I mean, it's done amazing considering the size of it, but realistically, I'm gonna wear through that now in another few inches, and then it will take another one and another one. It's done very well for what it is, but I'm gonna go over to the angle grinder for uh, the rest of it now. And yeah, maybe if I just do it very gently in small bits, I'll be able to do it without uh, making, you know, massive kind of lines everywhere. Right, my brother was telling me that angle grinding wheels now have dates on them, Maybe they have for a long time. And yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to use them if you go over the date. So if you have a look here, so you can see 2024. This one as well, 2024. And this one here is metal cutting. You see nice and thin, and this is grinding nice and thick. My oh my, that is cutting through like butter. Honestly, it's so much easier. Well done Vince, great camera placement. Everybody wants to see your backside and not the actual work you're doing. Anyway, 
Let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. This month they consist of KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJVG, Ellis Scarbert, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrup Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless, Extrem 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, and Daniel Watson. Massive thank you guys. Now let's get back to the filming where hopefully you can see more of the car and less of my saggy derriere. Okay, so that's uh, most of it off here. This can't come off because I've got metal which is pretty good here. So now I'm going to get the grinding disc on the uh, angle grinder and I'm just going to go around and try to get this back to metal around here, clean metal. I'm just going to put a long sleeve top on for this. Right, okay, if you look here, the problem I've got is this metal here is actually very good, so it's going to take me forever and a day to grind through all of the metal from here to here. So I think what I'm going to do is, I can't see how it's uh, been put on. I presume it's spot welds, but I can't actually see any spot welds. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver. I know it's not the correct tool, but this is only a cheap screwdriver that I use for nothing else. So I'm happy to bash it around the place with the hammer. Uh, I am going to just start bashing up the metal to try to peel away what I can and then you see I might be able to expose some spot welds by using pliers and peeling it back in which case then I can just grind the spot welds because otherwise I'll be grinding all day Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, if you have a look closely here, you can now see that I've lifted it here and through here. So the spot weld is here and I can now see the spot weld. There's a tiny little circle here and a tiny little circle here. So you see what I can now do is bend this away and now I can just grind this bit and this bit and then all of this will just fall off. Okay, you know what, overall I'm happy with how it's coming out so far. It might all go horribly wrong soon, but uh, it's pretty good and the inner wheel arch looks okay, not too bad. So I need to make a repair here. I need to put some 1.2mm metal, fold it and put it on the inside. I will be putting under seal everywhere when it's all done anyway and uh, you know to keep all, the, uh, keep all the rain and damp and mud everything off it. And uh, just a tiny little repair here, it's a little bit rusted here, but I've been grinding back and it's looking all pretty good. So it's still got a little bit of surface rust on. So what I'm going to do is, my brother's given me various different wheels you could put onto drills which are less harsh than the angle grinder because the problem is, you see, there's indentations where it goes in and stuff so the angle grinder is just going to keep taking away more and more metal. So I'm going to use one of those drill wheels to uh, clean up all the rest of the, the rust but you can see it's all looking pretty, uh, pretty nice. One of my spot welds popped through there but apart from that all the other spot welds came out uh, came out pretty good so yeah overall so far I'm pretty happy with it it might still go horribly wrong but it's okay at the moment so I'm just going to weld something in here try to neaten up that little bit there and then we can cut this one so that's what I'm going to be using
Right, I'm just giving it a little clean up in here and look how satisfying this is, you ready? I've already got loads off. Look how that just caked in mud. I thought it was under seal, but it's not, it's just mud. Let's see what this is up here. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm still just cleaning around in here. I'm really happy with the, the structure of lots of things here. I know it might be worse in there, but uh, it really is very solid. So, uh, so far so good. But look here, this is interesting. What to begin with, look at uh, look how, how this is cleaning up. We're just rubbing it with a brush. Now, this is a cable tie at the top here. So I'm sure there should be a cable tie at the bottom here. So I need to put a cable tie on the bottom after I've cleaned everything. Because otherwise I suppose dirt's gonna get up in here and get into the uh, shock absorber type thing. I'm not sure how if this, I don't think this is like a shock like a normal car because you see we have the hydraulic fluid going into it. Now, if this is a green pipe here going in here and it's to do with the hydraulics, look at this here, it's all wet, isn't it? This has had leaks here. So maybe, I could be lucky, this could be a site of another leak. And if it is, then it might be easy to get to. I don't know about the other side. I'd have to, uh, you know, get under it and have a look up the other side there, up under here. But, uh, it definitely looks to me as if it's been leaking there. So who knows? That might be weeping here when it's under pressure, which is, uh, you know, maybe it's been spraying out here or something. So uh, yeah, that would be a lot more accessible than something at the bottom of the engine or underneath the car. So happy days. Okay, apologies, I keep getting sidetracked, but this is what I love because bit by bit, I'm learning more and more about the car. Even though I started off trying to weld up this thing here, I'm now starting to understand more about the braking system. So, for, to begin with, we've already showed you that there, so there's a chance that that's leaking. If anything, I say it's leaking from here because it seems to be loose here. So maybe when this is going up and down, it's spurting out, that would make more sense, spurting out from here across here. Now, if you have a look here, we have a green pipe here and a green pipe just down here as well. So one of these lines goes to feed the piston at the front here which will shove the brake pad onto this side of the disc and then the other line down here will shove the piston on this side which will shove the brake disc onto the the brake pad onto the back of this disc here and those two lines then go somewhere down here but anyway you can see it's fed from two lines here i presume this is to do with the abs now the abs light on this car is on so i presume this is the sensor that goes into this area somewhere in here but then these two lines travel all the way up to let me get my torch. Travel all the way up to here. Yeah, you can see there. And then, so these are all solid. So they, they are basically onto this rear suspension arm here. They're kind of bolted down onto these bits here. So they don't go anywhere, yeah? But now look, look further in there. Can you see now we have flexible pipes? Because obviously you can't have rigid pipes. Every time you go over a, a bump, it would just snap. So now it goes onto uh, flexible pipes there. Don't know where they go to after that, but that can be, you know, I'm sure I'll come across that when I'm trying to fix something else. Also, there's a bit of a horrible rusted pipe up here. This looks very corroded, so maybe that will need to be replaced. And it feeds down here, and it looks like it goes to some bleed nipple under here. So that's probably how I bleed the hydro uh, so that's good. Also, check this out down here as well. Look, this is the handbrake or the parking brake. And if you have a look, it's just a tiny, tiny little pad just here. So that's all it is, a little pad going onto there. And I presume the other side as well. So that's it when you put the parking brake on, which I've got on now, you know, like the foot brake, the one on the very left next to the uh, actual brakes for the car. It puts this on here. Okay, I was just wondering what was in here before I start, you know, like, yeah, drilling and grinding and stuff and it looks like there's a load of soundproofing can you see it looks like kind of hair in here yeah like a mat so obviously if I'm welding on that that's just gonna go a light straight away so I thought I wonder if I can get to there now in here I haven't had a chance to really inspect anything but this is where the spare bottles of fluid is supposed to be kept. Here we have some fuses and stuff in here as well. Memory fuses for the seats, I believe. I'm wondering, should I try to dismantle this in here to try, because I can see some screws in here. Right, I undone those screws, they came out really easy, and it looks like the whole thing is gonna wear. Uh... 
come out. Excellent, so that's that bit there. Tells me what fuses are here as well. Oh, ABS. So uh, that will be another episode trying to fix the ABS. So now, I presume, oh, that gets screwed into the bottom here. Let me, does it get screwed in? Yeah, there's a little screw here and also uh, up here as well. Let me undo them. Okay, so that came out nice and easy. Now, this is that weird cable that I found outside the car. So, where does that go up to? Up. Do you know what? I'm sure that's to do with the aerial. So we can pull that through. Uh, looks like this gives us access to the bolts for the bumper, just there. So that's good. Got a little bank of fuses just here. And look, stop failure lamp just here. So we've got more connections here. And also, if you look very closely in here, we have one of those spheres. But look, weird thing is, it's like a silver one, not a green one. I was expecting to see green. I thought silver was on the next model. See, this is 1988 registration, but I think it's a 1989 car it was listed at under the... Uh, under some sales thing. So maybe this has got some parts of the Spirit too. I'm not too sure, but that's definitely silver in there and not green. And it's the same on the other side as well. The other side's silver. So what I can actually see, which I thought was uh, what looked like sort of horsehair stuff. So this is the outer wing here. Yeah, nice and solid. It's this stuff here. It's this little sound deadening. So all I have to do is uh, uh, pull it back. So I'll get a screwdriver in there with my gloves on because obviously I've cut the other side of it and then I just need to pull that back here. This I think is the cable for the battery, the main cable or the ground, I'm not too sure. But no, no, that's the ground here. That's the ground one there. So this is the positive one. So maybe I'll undo that one there and that should give me access to be able to pull that away and then hopefully that won't melt. So one by one, the mysteries are solved. If you have a look here, I've pulled the aerial back through and the other end of it is here so that's definitely to go up here if you wanted the aerial on this side on my one the aerial is actually over the other side there so uh, i've undone the bolt down here i've moved the battery cable across and uh, as far as i can see that sort of sound deadening only goes about halfway the front half of the wheel arch doesn't look like there is any with my hand feeling but uh, i could be wrong there might be something further down what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a little pilot hole on each of them to begin with and then I can go through with a bigger one here. I think this is five, I think that's about five mil and I think that will be perfect for a spot well, very similar to what was on there beforehand. I'm hoping because it's only 0.9 millimetre metal that it will go through very easy. Yeah, extremely easy, so it's going to be a nice easy job. I think I'm going to do them every about one and a half centimetres. Okay, so you get the idea, that's going to take a good, I'd say 20 minutes or so. So uh, I'll come back to that when I've done all the holes and when I've grinded back to metal. Well, there we have it. I'm going to call it a day for today because I still need to put the wheel back on and I'm going out tonight. So by the time I go over and bathe and get myself all doled up, it's uh, I won't have much time left. But I'm really, really happy with how that's come out today. Back on day two and ready to start again. Luckily, it didn't rain yesterday. So this is as I left it. There's no more rust on it than there was yesterday which is great news and again the weather is nice i think god's been looking down on me and saying give this guy a break he's already in over his head he doesn't need any more complications and we've got another fine day which is just uh, amazing so let's jack it up get the wheel off again and let's start cutting around this wheel arch trying to get it in i'm also going to make a load of holes in here all the way around using that little tool and uh, then I can spot well from there onto the bottom of that arch but before I do all that I do need to do some little repair things here okay so just to show you what I'm doing with this little template thing so I got a bit of uh, thin the, the paper part of the cardboard and basically I just uh, put it in here to get my template like that and then I drew around it and then I brought it down to this 1.2 millimeter steel and I just cut out a section here and then I just put it in the vise in the shed and bent it over 
And if you have a look now, it will need a bit more whacking around the place when I've got a couple of welds on. But can you see I've drilled holes here and also underneath here and here. And now let's get it the right way around. So it's going to be that way around. So you see I've just bent it like so. And then we're going to be putting it in like that. And then that's going to build up this one here. It's going to be level there and there. And I'm going to be welding through here. So once I get a couple of welds in, it will allow me to get the hammer or maybe a cold chisel on the inside to really whack this right the way into the uh, into the metal. See this one here is almost touching so I can start on this one here and that will give it strength and then maybe I can uh, do the edge one here and then I can whack the middle bit out you know, towards me like here. And then all I have to do is maybe get one that's about an inch and put it in that little hole here. And I think then the inner wheel arch will be okay. Don't know what's happening down here at the moment. I'm gonna have to see what happens with this inner repair panel that I have to do. And also I've got the outer repair panel. So I'm not gonna worry about this section just yet. Okay, so they're welded into place and also grinded back as well. So you can see the hole that was here before, but now you can see solid metal underneath it. There you go. And I also put a patch behind this one here as well. So now it's, uh, it goes from here to here on the other side, still a bit warm, and grind it back. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that zinc spray all over this bit here now. I will be filling it with uh, wax all from the inside, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna to get to this side here yet. But, well, maybe I can just get the, uh, I think with the wax all you can get a special push down thing that builds up pressure, and then it comes with a long hose that spurts everywhere, so I'll have to get that, and then I'll be able to get it from the boot. But I am just gonna put the zinc across all this area here. Okay, so I've covered it now in all the zinc spray and it should be okay to weld with this because it should conduct. And now I've just marked out roughly, but I'm, I'm going bigger than I think I need so I can cut it down. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna fit in, but I'm gonna uh, go along here and then I'm gonna go on the outside blue line here to make it bigger around these bits here because I'm not quite sure how high I've drilled my holes in relation to this. I can see where it is in relation to the inner panel, but uh, I just wanna make sure I've got enough because this wasn't cheap. I'm just using a little, I'm gonna use this nibbler thing just to go all the way around. You can see it's just uh, cur curling it up here. It's probably gonna take a good 15 or 20 minutes to get all the way around, but if it's a nightmare, I'll just go over to the angle grinder, but this thing makes less noise. Okay, at long last, that is done. Obviously, it would have been much quicker on the angle grinder. It's just, uh, at least this way, it didn't create any noise. So, uh, I'm gonna just offer this up to the car now to see what it looks like. Okay, after all that nibbling, I still had to use the angle grinder anyway, because the thing is, it's very hard to kind of measure things up until it's on the car, but this bit here was too long, so I had to take a bit off this side. And also, this one had to be cut down more here, so, Remember, these are not gonna be original parts, so they might not be exactly like the uh, original. But look, can you see now, I've got all the holes, I think, just about covered up, because I need to lap it now, you see, so there's no point in lapping it up here if I have the holes all the way down here. But I think it's about right there. The problem I've got is, I think I might have made a massive mistake. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to feed all this under here, unless, of course, I can go around from this side here and kind of, uh, you know, try to work it all the way round. I just don't know if that's gonna work because it's not a perfect circle, is it? But anyway, I'm gonna lap it because this needs to be lapped. And then I think I'm probably gonna have to make cuts somewhere that, to, well, I don't wanna bend the metal. Don't know what I'm gonna do. But let me lap it to begin with. Right, so this is where inexperience comes in and lots of you watching this would have already realized this. But look, there's no point in uh, putting the, the lap here because I want this to go right the way down to here. The reason I want this to go down to here is because it's gonna be easier for me to fill it. So I can't put a lap here because obviously the tool would need to go onto this bit in order to put the lap from here. So a lap's perfect if I was to maybe go across here, then you could lap it. But not when I've brought it all the way down to here. Ideally, I should have maybe cut this shorter up here and then put the lap at the very end. But I still want the join to be on here because I think it will be less noticeable. So, 
I'm not going to lap it because think about it. This is 0.9, we call it one millimeter. It's one millimeter thick. Is anybody really going to notice if this is out by one millimeter all the way around? I don't think so. So, uh, right, I'm going to try to somehow get this into here. I think I'm going to probably have to cut this in half in order to do it. But let me struggle. It's going to take a while, uh, but hopefully we might get there. Wish me luck. So, I'm going to start here and try to shove it all the way around. Come on. Hold on now, I, I want to make sure it doesn't come out up here. wedged. So what are we on here? Do you know what? I think I might need another pair of hands rather than trying to use my chin to hold this out. Come on. There we go, I'm under now. I wonder if I was to get a block of wood and hammer it round, would it go round? I've got to be careful because I've got metal splinters here. Uh, do you know what, whilst, why? Instead of struggling, I am going to get my dad here to hold this out while I try to push this round. Right, here goes. So my dad's just holding it out here. You can have the pleasure of his sandals. <laughs> okay. Do you know what? I'm going to put my welding gloves on over these because those metal splinters will go straight into me. Hopefully this will uh, stop that from happening. Oh, you okay? Right, so what we'll do now, let's go along a little bit, that's okay. So just, uh, right, if you just hold that, uh, yeah, hold that there. Is it moving at all? It's moving up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now we're getting there. I don't know if we're on the joint. Okay. The there we go. That should be fine again.
Right, so I'm against now. I can't push it up anymore because I'm against the uh, the inner wheel arch, the bottom bit here, the kind of rear balance thing. So I'm just going to use a bit of wood and I'm just going to tap it up from here because I need to go about another two inches. Moving at all. Touch, just a touch. Go on, now, guys. It's going. It's going, mate. It's going. Right, thank you, Dad. Oh, I'm really happy with that. Obviously, when I start welding it, it will go into its place more. So, I'm going to get the repair bit from the shed to see if it does cover up this bottom section. But if you have a look now, obviously, I need to. Uh... Do you know what? I'm such an idiot. I need it to. I can't believe this. My brain. I need it to put holes in this. Oh, I needed to put holes in this before I put it on. Unbelievable. Right, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to drill them, but not drill through the second layer, which is going to be awkward. I should have drilled that before putting it on. I was supposed to use the tool to put sp the holes everywhere, but I was too busy thinking about the lap joint. I completely forgot about that. Right, so this is the repair bit here, and I think it's going to fit pretty nice like that there. So, yeah. That's going to be that's going to be good. So I presume I have to. Well, I've got to cut all this away. And I don't know whether that, I don't know whether this is supposed to overlap this or just join up to it. I'm not too sure. I think it's just supposed to join up to it. So I might be kind of perfect like that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. I just showed the drilling off one hole, so I've got a spare bit of metal here. So if I was to put that here. So I need that to pull right in. So I think I'm just going to go along the middle of this uh, new wheel arch. There we go. There you go. And you see, this is going to protect the inner wheel arch from it. So I need to work my way all the way around. I think I'm going to do them at an inch because I think originally they were like about this far apart from each other. So uh, if I do every inch, that's going to be more than enough. Well, considering I balls that big time, I did that just as quick, I think, as I would have done. In fact, it might have been quicker because I had the weight to push against the car and stuff rather than trying to just do it uh, with the tool. So there you go, it's all the way around now. Down here I've done more than one an inch because uh, I'm going to need to pull this in a lot. Because this is like a replacement patch that's been put on here, the mouldings are different than the other side. So if I go around the other side, you can see the kind of, uh, the wheel arch goes right the way down to the bottom of the car. It kicks out even down here. So where the metal stripe would be, it's really still kicking out, while on this side it comes up flat. So I'm going to have to try to form something there. You see here, the metal stripe comes along here, and this is this is flat. I need it. I think I need it to. From here, I think it needs to kick out more. So I think I'm going to have to try to. Do you know what I might do? Because on the other black wing that I've got, the massive wing, I only need the bottom section off the thing for the other side. Maybe I'll take a bit of the wheel arch and I will just cut it here and here and just make up this little bit here to go down you know what I mean and then weld it onto here again I'm not worrying about that today 
Okay, looking at the time, I'm gonna to have to call it a day here on this episode here. I've still got so much content to get through, there's no way I'm gonna get it all in within a one hour video. So I will release them both on YouTube at the same time. So if you enjoyed this episode, go straight to the next episode and you will see me start to weld in this wheel arch. I hope you enjoyed this one here. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in a few minutes on the next episode. Thanks for watching everyone.